What is going on, everyone? It's David Palmer, the Leo King, and Rich Lop here for the Awakening Experience live in Texas. What up, Rich? What is up, man? How you doing? I'm doing great. If we can get that mic out of your face and the shot of the camera. Is the mic in my face? Oh, it is. It looks like, you know. Uh, there we go. Is that better? Female to male. <laughs> that better <laughs> <laughs> it's way better all right it's good to be here though bro We're yeah in texas for the solar eclipse how are you feeling oh man this has been rough but i mean i, I kind of expected it because this is like a full-on energetic reset and i've been right. mentally preparing myself for it but you you try to mentally prepare yourself for shit like this and it it, it like me i always fall short <clears throat> i get a little bit co cocky and i'm like oh man i got this I got this. And then every fucking time, it's like, no, I don't. I got this <laughs> at all. I don't got this. But it's Aries season with the eclipse and a Mercury retrograde. Right. You know, I mean, every Aries season. Tell me, tell me if you've experienced this. I don't know. I've been experiencing something really weird for ever since the clock struck Aries season. Of course, we always know that every Aries season, people flip out and act weird. Right. And right. like, at least my experience on the internet is always dealing with people who are very unhinged. Well, here lately, normally, I'm very used to dealing with unhinged women, right? But not, not this Aries season. The women have been cool as fuck, like seriously bringing divine feminine. I've been being attacked like crazy by little snowflake beta males, like all over the place, man. It has been attack of the fucking snowflake beta males like I've never experienced in my entire career. Have you noticed that or is that just me? I mean, I, I, I would assume there's probably others out there. <laughs> but no, I, I get it. I, I think that there's been a lot of energy where people are feeling overtaxed. And I think men right now have been feeling that a lot. So there's a lot of like prima donna aries chiron like the wound of the masculine really is coming up with this eclipse and chiron and aries mm. so and like it's it's more badass to heal than to avoid the healing right so it's kind of like nah i don't want to do the healing so i'm just going to act that typical male energy and then it, you feel it, I think, more when we're all in this place where we're like, we're all just fucking getting through this and ready for things to shift and, and change the loop energy. Because I think we're all caught up in old cycles and old loops. Yeah. Like, that's what you were saying here. Like, it, it felt like this trip was like getting us out of an old, what did you call it? Like an old frequency, like... Uh, well, I mean, it's just been like a really overplayed frequency that's that for me it's just been this one long cycle ever since last Aries season dude I swear to God it has been challenge after challenge after challenge after obstacle after obstacle the shit that we dealt with here setting the show up right. that's been my whole fucking life all year and and I, I'm thinking I feel like the universe kind of put me in that situation because for me personally the three years prior was just peace, comfort, happiness, and no struggles, no issues. Just, I'm chilling, happy as fuck, comfortable, you know? Right. So it, it, I think I can see how it's kind of helped me. Right. Throw me into, it's like, okay, for the next year, the next year is going to suck. And I've just been waiting. I'm like, man, it's right around the corner. <laughs> the end of this cycle is right around the corner, and then it's not. And I'm like, fuck, man. And then I'm like, okay, it's, it's right around the corner this time. And then it's not. And I'm like, fuck, dude, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm just stuck like this for the rest of my life. You know, it's been rough. I mean, I think that's the hard part is we always feel like we're really stuck in life, Yeah. but it always passes. But this has been, I mean, this is a rare eclipse when it goes total, you can see all the planets, which weird is you don't see the planets at night. The only way that you could see the planets would be this rare moment of this total solar eclipse. And because the light of the sun is being blocked out by the moon in the middle of the day, that you would be able to see the planets. That's more abnormal than the weird dudes acting weird. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
And so when you think about it, that's an event that does change the code, right? Like the codes being unlocked. It's like a kind of like a master lock, like an old, like, you know, what were those called? Combination locks? Like finally, mm -hmm. oh my God, we're changing that. Like this is the code here. Yeah. And I think it's an interesting to see so many people talk about it that aren't really like into astrology per se, but like all the conspiracy community putting like connecting it to the Bible, connecting it to yeah, yeah. every weird situation you can think about that, you know, every other eclipse, it's kind of like, Oh yeah, I'm going out with my grandpa to check it out. Like, and it's more of just kind of like an anomaly thing. That's not that big a deal, but this one, like they're doing huge festivals and stuff and yeah. events now. And I think that's a good sign. I think that the world right now is looking for answers. And I think they're finally starting to look in the right places opposed to running away from themselves and, and running towards like the programmed reality bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. is a good sign. I think the awakening experience is actually happening bigger than we all think, but it's just been tiring for all of us carrying the load as humanity to get to this point. Cause I think it's just a tired reality of an old system and it's an old age. Yeah. I mean, that, well, that is the, my whole goal with this show. The, the whole reason why I started this show was, yeah. was so that, cause most people don't talk about the hard parts of the awakening experience. No. Most people don't. It's ooh la la la, and and you know, and I hate it when I sound like this. I sound like I'm being negative, like I'm trying to say that it sucks, and that's not what. That's not my point. The point is, I'm trying to shine a light on the shit nobody talks about. You know, that's why tomorrow out there, the talk that I'm going to be doing about manifestation is going to be about encompassing the whole thing not just the pretty shit not just the fluffy shit right but i mean there, there's hard things that go along with it too and you know i think one of the biggest issues in the spiritual community again the reason why the spiritual community shouldn't be a community spirituality shouldn't be something that just this little group of people do over here you know right. like I, it, the spirituality of the, the awakening experience is for everybody to understand. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your sign is. I don't care your race, religion, ethnicity, sexuality. If you're a human walking around on two legs on planet Earth, this is spirituality. Right. Your, your relationship with you, your energy, your frequency, and the matrix around you. You know, and, and people finally looking in the right place for those answers that are really hard pills to swallow is what I think that this eclipse is all about because you know, the news and everybody's being crazy and fucking freaking everybody out. And, and like I said, this year, again, I, I'm going to beat this drum to death, dude, this year, they're going to put on a shit show and they're not going to censor anybody. Right. I mean, I, I, when I'm, when you just said all that, I started thinking of like people now are willing to like look for things in the right way. But they're also like becoming aware. It's like, look at this whole P. Diddy thing. Puff Daddy thing. This guy's Sean Diddy Combs. This guy's changed his name so much. But it's fucking disgusting to think of how long, how many decades people would just <clears throat> sell their soul to go be something. Mm -hmm. And now it's like coming up on this eclipse where it's like the real ego isn't about being the showy part it's the it's the one that removes the soul and the moral soul and just sells your soul mm -hmm. i mean we can all be egoic in our ways but i think that we're at a place in society where humanity is at this like okay you're either a human or you're just like out for yourself to where you're not even yourself you're giving yourself to this fucking like let's be honest the shit that's starting to come out is looking like Epstein Island was like for like, I don't know, the old Stephen Hawking's that were in wheelchairs that wanted midgets. <laughs> but the stuff that we grew up in our culture today and what's been programming, it has all been coming through this really creepy lens. I mean, all the, like seeing all the, the, the Diddy videos with him and, 
adopting that little girl to Justin Bieber in him and like even Usher at 13. Yeah. And then if you think it's like all the songs that like Usher brings out, it's like, yeah, I know I cheated on you, girl. I got another girl pregnant, but you should respect me because I'm being honest and take me back. <laughs> <laughs> like... And that that's been normalized, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, ha, you know, did did you? I, I haven't watched it yet, but me and Leah keep saying that we're going to watch the documentary um, "Quiet on Set." Have you heard about that one? I've heard it. I have not watched. Yeah, it yet, it's like though. the behind the scenes of the Nickelodeon children's mm. TV and shit, and how dark yeah. and sinister and sick that shit was. That one producer who's always rubbing the backs of yeah. those little kids and all that and then he had to come out and he was like I apologize I, I'm sure it was uncomfortable for people who were watching it happen <laughs> I'm like what about the person you were doing it to dude well, as soon as I started seeing people posting about that online I hadn't even thought about Amanda Bynes in fucking years so I'm like man I wonder what in the hell she's been up to so I go searching for her and I keep seeing this name pop up Amanda Bynes with a check mark next to it and then some chick I've never seen before. And I'm like, that's weird. I guess some other chick named Amanda Bynes went and got famous. Dude, have you seen fucking Amanda Bynes? It looks nothing like her. I have not. I haven't gotten that it down. It would blow down. your fucking mind. I'm not even convinced that that's her. And Leah is like, no, nah, that's not her. That's a clone. But like the most piss poor clone. You know how the, the two Kanye's, you know, look different, but they still look like Kanye kind of, you know, this, right. whoever this is that is claiming to be Amanda Bynes, maybe it is. I don't know. But dude, that don't look nothing fucking like her. Same thing with Diddy's picture. It looked like it was from like Sega Dreamcast like character. <laughs> like when they showed a picture of him recently, like his face looked all like, yeah, it was like, or that could just be that. There's just some really weird energy that happens to you soul-wise that makes you exterior look weird when you're fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, like, like if you're fucking weird inside, you're going to look weird outside. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's like the, the kind of the Aries energy, right? It's like, it's very simple. It's like, if you're acting fucking weird, you're going to look weird. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, if, if, if you're not doing well inside, it's like... And you're scratching your fucking looking for a fucking crack rock because that's inside. You need something to fulfill you. That's what it's going to look like on the outside. Yeah. And I think it's hard because people focus so much on what they want to look on the on the outside without realizing how much on the inside there is. And, and a lot of it's simple stuff to to face, but it's like super easy to find the easy escape route. And then some people also want to find the easy route to get to wherever they want to go right aries is very much about where i want to go and it's like it's so much more satisfying to go where you want to go naturally and if it works it works and follow wherever it takes you opposed mm -hmm. to like this hard knock spot i have to get here and it has to look this way and yeah. i will fucking do whatever it takes to get there because it's like look at the world right now Everything is fucking in shambles right now. I mean, even when we were on the road, it's like, I'm, I'm like thinking like society's at a place to where it's like every truck stop we went to, there's just some new piece missing inside the store. Old products that are 20 years old, still stuck in there. Yeah. Like everybody fucking like, you know, you can feel it in the air that this is, I think you said it best when we were talking for many hours on the road. It was like, you just said like, this game is, has like, it, it, there's nothing new left yeah. in the game. Yeah. Yeah. It's expired. Have you noticed that? Like back, yeah. back when we were kids, if you noticed 20 years ago in 1995, it was clearly fucking different. Clearly. Yeah. You know, like 1975 to 1995 was completely different. Now, 25 years ago, 20 years ago, like it's not that different. Kind of. A little bit. I'm not saying it's, there's nothing different. But for the very most part, to the untrained eye, you wouldn't really be able to tell that much of a difference in the music, the clothes. It's like the last great decade was the 90s. You know, we went from the 40s, 50s, 60s, right. 70s, 80s, 90s. All those decades were very different. And then after the 90s, there's nothing new under the sun. They're just recycling old shit, 
you know? Yeah. It's, so it's, it, we were talking about the music, especially cause it's like shit I listened to in 95, you know, it's like, wow. Or even in tw- 2005, I'm like, oh man. And now it's 20 years. And I'm like, that's 20 years old. That'd be like in 95 yeah. when I was listening to the Eagles with my dad, you know, and yeah. it was like, Oh, that's your old music fucking, you know, but I love the Eagles, but like, that's like 20 years ago. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I'm that guy now I'm listening to <laughs> fucking metal for 20 years ago. Yeah. The kids today are like, what's that? They scream <laughs> when they fucking do it. Yeah. <laughs> I need to be able to hear like auto tuned out weird voices or something yeah but it was trippy because it's like it still is kind of not so separated like you know 70s music sounded like that was that era yeah. and this is everything's all blended in yeah. now and so like innovation wise too we've definitely come to some point where either fucking the aliens are coming some crazy technology is going to come fusion technology, something that's got to shift to where it all is because like there's nothing like, is there another iPhone that's going to make you feel better in life? Is there another <laughs> fucking charger that's going to blow your mind? Yeah. Nothing blows anybody's mind anymore. What blows my mind more is like looking at these crazy stories or seeing how people believe the AI stuff, like the whole, we didn't get to cover it, but Princess Catherine, to be proper, her video is AI. The Getty Images Not. just put it out <laughs> that it's a third party and it violates that their terms of service and you go on and it says generative AI and all that stuff. And that's their polite way to not cause tension, right? And then Vanity yeah. Fair, Fair put it up and said, uh-oh, this is not a verified video anymore. And yeah. they scrubbed so much of it and just put the, and it's from the BBC. So they're basically saying the BBC and the palace are fucking corrupt. Yep. So it's not just the picture with the family. It's the video of her cancer. And the fact that people right now, what blows my mind is that people like are still putting comments like, yeah, leave her alone. <laughs> Dude, man. She's got cancer. Well, the video's not real. Well, not that. See, I made a mistake of looking in your comment section. See, I don't read comments. I just don't. I try. I, I read <laughs> comments on my Facebook profile, but I went to your comment section, and that reminded me why I don't read fucking comments. I'm like, dude, I cannot fucking believe after all this time, all right? this shit, four years of, of a goddamn virus and vaccine and all this bullshit, people are still believing the shit. I it know. comes out on the news. Maybe it's my fault. Because, like, I keep thinking, okay, yes, everybody's awakening now. And then the news drops some bait in the pond, and they all fucking bite it every fucking time. And right. I'm like, dude, man. Like, it almost makes me want to yank my fucking hair out. I cannot believe. What's it going to be next? Because, you know, they're going to forget about that here in, what, two oh, weeks? yeah, probably. And then they're going to drop some more bait in the pond. They're going to be all over it like flies on dog shit. And then they'll forget <laughs> about that after a couple of weeks, and they'll drop more bait in the pond. And, and just... Over and over and over. That's why this this system is going to crash. And when it crashes, a lot of people are going to lose their fucking minds. The the goal, my goal, is to help try. I'm, I'm not saying that I'm going to be the, the the one, but at least we could play like a little part and at least plant seeds in people's minds so that they can be like, oh, okay, well, let me just chill and relax. It's got to go down this way. But now I'm losing the faith. I just think that people are going to have to get slapped awake. And get the shit scared out of them, you know? Yeah, and I think it's it's not that scary, though, when it comes down to, like, okay, like, and in life, whatever it is, if you want to feel better or do something in life, you just have to do it. It's not like taking away the way things are right now in reality because society's falling from population mm-hmm. I mean, already, that, that's going down, like, at a level never seen since the Black Death. And then you add on top of it, it's like, okay, people are just not showing up to life anymore. Like they're piecing out of this earth quicker than ever. Babies aren't being born. 
a lot of people I know are having concerns thinking like, are people going to be able to have babies? Like there's so many miscarriages, so many like, uh, like in vitros happening. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was part of their plan. And so people think like, oh God, the world's going to be destroyed by the war, by like, you know, the currency. It's like, just look at it. The world's based off people. It's going to destroy itself. And there's not going to be enough to hold all these like systems up. And I think that's what's the hard part is like, it's not that scary because you'll still be able to like get what you need to do for yourself, what's available in life. That's how the universe works. Yeah. You want to go farther than that and create something great. We already know that 99.9% of the earth doesn't do that. Yeah. Right. Why is it only the 1% of the 1% that actually make things that are successful and keep going? Because it's already out there that I mean, if you're an American, you're 1% of the earth. Because more than everybody on the whole planet. And that's at basic to medium income. Yeah. I mean, it's the, the programming. You know, like I said, I know the solution to the problem. The solution to the problem is the, the programming. This message that we put out there, if, if, you, if, if that could get its tentacles into every little aspect of mainstream, whether it's the news or the doctors or the med school or the colleges and the shit right. teachers teach in school. You know, if, 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 if it was made acceptable for a college professor to start talking about the fact that, you know, you can, you can rewrite your own fucking brain chemistry. You know that, right? Yeah. If, if, if they would start teaching that shit and that became ubiquitous fucking common sense, I guarantee you, in less than five years, the whole game would fall apart. Because people, you know, they can't let you know that because, you know, the psychological and the psychiatric community would crumble to the ground. They, they want you to believe you're a victim of your own fucking brain, you know? And that's just one little example. That's just one little example. It's super that, little example. Yeah, that, that's just, that's the solution to the problem because people are always looking in the wrong places for the answers, you know? Well, I think it's like, I think everybody's at their coming to their, well, I guess the cliche would be their come to Jesus moment. And, and it's like, do I want to live my life anymore in this struggle? Because really it's a struggle. The program's a struggle. Like it's an intentional struggle. Yeah. And we all have so many creative things we want to do. We all want to enjoy our life. And if you look at relationships, you look at, all parts of our lives that we find beautiful energy in, but also the most beautiful things are also the hardest things. Heartbreak, grief, all these things. A lot of it's due to the programming because it's like you can find the best friend and then fucking some program situation comes up. We'll ruin like the great things of that. Same thing in lovers. Same thing at fucking things that you like to do. And a lot of it is the mental aspect of it and the way that the mind has become the controller of everything. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the healing element that's having to take place is that we identify with things that aren't really who we are. We're mm -hmm. identifying with what is being identified for us. And that's what this eclipse really is, is covering, is that are we going to identify off what we think we should identify as in the world? I'm not even talking about the gender thing. Like so that to me is like whatever. It's the what we identify with as a person, and what we are, what we do, and where what are we going to be here? What is the great mm -hmm. stuff that I can yeah. be instead of it being like because a lot of it's focus. The focus is always on the outside of the opinion or what will it look like to others. Where yep. that's gonna be a disaster mm -hmm. no matter what you do yeah i mean i think people need to try like if we all just said let's not shower for a week okay just show up as you are and see how we all realize the programs like running all these ideas like what a dirty fucking scoundrel Right? You didn't fucking shower for two days? If you really look at it, that's the programming subconscious that's really deep. Like, 
Mm-hmm. Oh my God, you have a hole in your fucking jeans? You need to get new jeans. Yeah. How do, I can't believe it. You paid for your fucking Burger King and change? <laughs> Like, what's the difference from a card to change? Right. That those things are so deep now that it's subconscious. Like, especially when you get into the upper echelons of, well, I'll just call it mainstream reality now, of everybody having this entitlement thing of just like, oh, my God, like, did you see, like, girls complain about makeup and shit? Mm-hmm. Guys are like, well, look at that fucking simp. <laughs> when we've all been simps before, yeah, that's yeah. how we know what a simp is. Yep. And I think that we all have to like hold space for others if we're going to change, like giving that little extra of space. Like we all fuck up. We all react to things different. We all go through things. It's about that realness that has to come out. Mm-hmm. Because yep. if that realness doesn't come out, then the program's running. Yeah. And right now I'm looking at it like, man, I wish people, like, what if we all just, there's no official holiday or something, but just all, everybody just said, okay, for the next week, just be yourself. Don't fucking try to be whatever you think. Just like, just fucking, hey, yeah, fucking here it is. This is me who I am. And see what happens because all those things are going to come up. In every mm. place. Yeah. Because even if grandma doesn't want to wear her wig for the week, you're going to see who she is yeah. without the wig. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, that's the, that's what, like, it, it hits every part of everybody. Everybody's mm-hmm. putting on something. Yeah. Just keep my vape and I'm okay. <laughs> well, I think, I think the, 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 the deeper I've been digging into just that, like with personal clients and whatnot, I've learned in my career that a lot of people don't even know who they really are. Yeah. Because they've been hiding who they really are for so long since they were little kids. They don't even know who they are. So, so I've, I've over the past six months to a year, I've had to do a perspective shift where I was thinking for the longest time that most people are intentionally and consciously hiding who they are. And that there probably are a lot. I'm not saying there's not, but I think the majority of the people are doing it unconsciously. They don't even know who they really are because, you know, it's been the programming since they were a little kid. You better dress this way. Put on that shirt before you go to church and comb your hair and don't act like this and don't act like that and don't do this in front of those people. And that's been drilled into their head for so long that they don't even know who the hell they are. Because that's actually the most, that's like a, a really dark manipulation. Like when a parent's like, don't do this in front of some other people because I don't want to be looked yeah, at. Yeah. It's not about what your child is doing. It's my ego doesn't want to have Mrs. Kravitz talking about fucking how much of a fucking little kid you were being. Yeah, yeah. And that's the darkest shit on the planet. People mm-hmm. think the darkest shit is Diddy. That's dark. Don't get me wrong. But we all love to project onto a dark thing and then go, no, I'm not being dark when it's like, get over here. Oh, hi. Yeah, I know my kid's great. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's emotional manipulation of the kid. It's emotional manipulation to the other person. Right? It's like always trying to be some fucking beautiful starlet or star fucking to some person that you don't even know if they're going to give a fuck or not Mm -hmm. so a lot of it's a lot of wasted energy and a wasted space and to be honest it's about humanity and and humanity is at a place to where it's so fractured because of not us but allowing the programs to run our lives Mm -hmm. like the fact that we're at a time now where it's like people will be like there's too many that's too conspiracy it's like we all know that's like fucking probably the only place that's real like left like because everything that's fucking not and anything that's putting a fact check up or anything that's trying to fucking deliver you a message right like I, I, what blew my mind was like all those news anchors that were like having affairs like the abc fucking ones right they were having an affair and mm-hmm. all that shit and they were delivering all the covid shit for abc and shit like that while well, they were just like fucking each other and fucking <laughs> not telling their fucking marital partners like 
that's how fucked up society's gotten that the program itself that's being spewed out is fucking over themselves and other people mm. but putting on well they look good they have a degree yeah yeah they I, have this or whatever and like that's all of it's so bad now mm-hmm. it's really gotten to like this really dark space because you really look deep if you want to be honest in yourself you gotta go oh my god like everything's always about coming back to like yourself like when really it doesn't matter like who cares so yeah. I think people have to get over that embarrassment when there's nothing to be embarrassed about. Yeah. It's like some people have a hard time. Like I had ketchup on my nose and Leah told me the other day when we were on the road, like, Hey, you might want to It's like, Oh, okay, whatever. But I know people that would fucking flip. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, Oh my God, why didn't you tell me? Yeah. It's like it's fucking ketchup on your nose. Yeah. <laughs> and I wasn't eating a hot dog. <laughs> I like hot dogs though, but yeah. Yeah. Now, I, I think story wise, though, the eclipse has been weird. The fucking war shit is, it's been so hard to keep tabs on things because things are changing so fast. Now, the big, I've never seen this, and I told you this when we were in the car, because especially I was in the Navy. To see where the U.S. government over the last two days has warned all of America of Iran attacking America. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, if, if you were to say that shit, I was in the military 19 years ago, people would be like, that's never going to happen. Right? So then they throw the eclipse scare, the flight scare, fucking for this eclipse. Then you just add on top of it, like, all the world war fucking shit happening bridges fucking coming down from boats that don't show a splash anywhere mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah and coming down like a fucking accordion looking like wtc7 <laughs> that i'm like i'm like i'm like okay like i look at that and i'm just kind of like every story is what could happen possibility of it and then they make it a big deal Everybody, I think, has to get rid of possibilities so much and just be, like, taking things as is. Like, well, have they attacked? No. Okay. If they do attack, what will I do? I'll figure that shit out in the moment. When I was in Texas here a year and a half ago and I did a really intense lecture, I told a bunch of people in a room in Texas, I said, I know you guys got all the guns. I know you guys got all the fucking camo and you guys got the land and you guys got it all, but half the people in Texas are overweight. <laughs> and so when the fucking guns start flying, they're going to run in the field and then they all took the COVID shot and they're going to fucking have myocarditis and fall over and die. Yeah. <laughs> that room did not like me at the end of it. <laughs> well, I mean, at least you but planted like, you some know, seeds. But like, if you think about it, like... People are over planning their egos of how it's going to, because it's what I want it to look like, right? Instead of just like what it is. Like if, okay, if Iran attacked right now, I'd be like, okay, well, that's a lot of fucking bombs to cover the whole America, right? Mm -hmm. Or even this city we're in, right? But I'm like looking over like, oh, I could go hide over there. Because I think I'm I'm, I'm more like zombie apocalypse kind of guy. Like, well, where, where would I shack up? Where would I figure it out? In the moment, not like, you, you, nine, out, nine out of ten times, you can't go back to the place that you have your prep, right? Like, it's not like, oh, God, I'm just going to go fucking back to my prep house and fucking get all this stuff. And then, oh, I didn't, I forgot, you know, because we're all human, right? It's like, oh, I forgot. I kind of moved it and I didn't stack that there. Oh, and I forgot I would have to get this. To actually move all your stuff that you prepped to a fucking truck or a car and then to fucking make sure you had enough fuel. And then to do, 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 unless you were like a gnarly prepper. <laughs> right? Which, to be honest with you, that would be not a life I'd want to live. No. Right? Because you'd be waiting there your whole time and it might not happen or whatever. The whole fact is, is that people are too afraid of the moment to just identify what is and just be what, what it is and actually learning to accept like, well, this is my prepped shit. If it was a zombie apocalypse, two weeks into it, you wouldn't even give a fuck whose shit it is. You'd walk in somebody's house and there's the old grandma, <laughs> you know, and then, all right, fucking she has some Cheerios in here. Fuck, you know, like yeah. you, wouldn't, 
you wouldn't think twice like you know and people are people are like the, the, the toxicity to me is that it's like a it's like a fucking predator that has like come on top of all parts of our brains that's just drilling constantly and it's what I think we're all tired is is of the sucking. It, it has no more life left to suck out. Yeah. And that's maybe why it feels like it's coming to an end, mm -hmm. right? Because it's like even the dark kind of like weird entity force has like taken all it can out of humanity. Mm -hmm. And we have to be honest with ourselves that like we got, we got ourselves sucked dry almost to where we look like. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, that's their goal. That's their plan. They, they want all of us at the lowest frequency possible so that when they crash everything, we'll come begging for them. Yeah. They're, they're going to create a problem and then they're going to come say, Hey, I got the solution. Here's your central bank digital currency. Oh, please. Thank you. Thank you. My 401k is gone. I need to, you know, and, and then those people are going to learn real quick. You know, if you, if you pick up, pick up your phone and say something on it, they don't like, oh, you can't buy tomatoes. <laughs> right. If you if you post something on social media we don't like, oh, you can't use your car. That's why they want you to have an electric car. Right. Oh, turn your Tesla off. And and they're going to learn real quick. That's the reason why they're doing that. But this year is going to be the year because like I've I've made lots of references to the shit that I've heard from the deep state itself. You know, and he was telling us that their plan is to have the U.S. population down to 95 million by 2025. By 2030, there will be no more naturally born babies. And that was their plan. Yeah, so, and you've been seeing all the pod fucking baby shit. Yeah. Yeah. They, right? they, and they, they're using the IVF thing, like all the in vitro shit, and how it's like, oh, there's the debate of whether that's an embryo child or not in fucking states and all this. It's all to get people to focus more on like, is it really working? That's the whole dark force. Like, it's never about the issue at the front. It's to trigger your subconscious to be like, who do I know that got in vitro? Oh, yeah, all those 40-year-old women. Did it work? For some it did. For some it didn't. Right? And then, and then you start going like, well, why did my friend just have a miscarriage? They didn't have in vitro. And then it starts going. Like, so every situation right now is not about the situation itself. It's about the subconscious triggering to get you to get to that place. Because like when you were mentioning like how the CBDC, right? It's like when the 2008 crash happened, a lot of fucking money always comes in, right? And to all the farmers and shit, like that had to pay their farmland and all that. Mm -hmm. It's like oh, fuck, and then there's maybe a year with a drought. It's like they come through like, hey, we've got the fucking cash. We'll buy this from you, and we'll take care of you. And the gangsters are like, no, we're going to fucking make it through this shit because they already know when the fucking drought will end, know the timing, and they'll sometimes put stuff out like, here, we know you need some fucking shit for your fucking cattle, and they'll put it, and they'll like leave it in the front of the fucking farm. But that's the bait to see how desperate mm -hmm. you are. You never, right? Like, no, I don't need your shit, Yeah. right? It's the same thing with like a CBDC or even like, you know, this bird flu thing. They're trying to fucking pop that up now. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's worse than fucking COVID. It's mm -hmm. like, well, you know what? Fucking a lot of things worse than COVID and always was. I think I still believe that COVID wasn't real and it will come out that it wasn't what people thought it was no 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 I mean, obviously they know something else going on with the sun and with the radiation and all this shit and all the fucking chemtrails and all this like it's so yeah. much easier to fucking make people think they have a fucking virus by making it to where the fucking environment and yeah. 5g fucking came out and all this shit and 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 people are still not fucking willing to own that that's how you know yeah i mean I, i'm not even convinced that covid was just one thing you know, I, people say it was a bioweapon. Well, a lot of the research that I've done has indicated that it was probably more than one bioweapon. There was one they put in the water. But, right. you know, they spray the shit in the air right. with the planes. And then, I, a freak, and then a frequency weapon. Yeah, and a frequency weapon, yep. And it's like they want to keep the bio thing to make you think of the... Because it sells the whole viral idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, like, no... But the fact that they don't have an answer or the fact that... There's no COVID commission. Like after 9-11, there was a 9-11 commission. 
after fucking all these things, there's always a commission in the government. There's no, there's no commission investigating. Mm -hmm. Because there's nothing to show except for the shit they did, which would be nothing that you would think. Already they did that with the shot. So mm -hmm. what do you think they did before the shot? Yeah. Right? Or why was it only people on cruise ships at the beginning? Mm -hmm. Those cruise ships were the first 5G fucking satellite fucking places because the internet on a cruise ship is mm. from satellite. Yeah. And they had just put those on top. Plus, I always saw the spiritual significance of work your ass off, retire, to go on a fucking ship full of fucking old people like you, <laughs> right? And sit on this ship and make your life feel good. We already know those ships, everybody fucking gets actual sick. They're throwing up all the fucking time, right? And that shit spreads. So they get that, and that's already in people's minds. So it's easy to be like, of course, something like that would spread on a ship. Mm -hmm. And they use those ships as the fucking cell point, right? <gasps> and then it, oh, and then you just let them come into the port, and then, okay, go into the airports and fly wherever you need to go to spread it. If it was a real thing, they would have never done that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, I, I don't even think it was airborne. No. no. Because it makes no... St I'm sorry to say, I fucking was around a lot of people who supposedly had COVID and yeah. didn't, didn't get COVID at the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. we, like, ne we never went anywhere when we caught it. We, we, right. we are very homebody people. We, didn't, we were living in Bullhead City at the time. We didn't go nowhere. We didn't have no friends in that town. We sat at home and worked, and that's it. It's that's probably somebody who had COVID who coughed in Laughlin, and it came across the river to Bullhead <laughs> City and went through your fucking door crease and then fucking came up the door crease and went past the dead scorpions that fucking... <laughs> That you found last night at the Airbnb and fucking literally fucking came into your guys' nostrils and then came into your lungs and then infected you. Yeah. I mean, that makes so much sense. <laughs> makes, makes more sense than, <laughs> than, than, than and I'll never forget when they, when they started actually putting the shit, taping the fucking six feet apart signs on the floor. And, right. And I'm, I'm like, dude, nobody's going to fall for that. Nobody's going to fall for that. Nobody is that stupid. And everybody was that stupid. Like, we're in a gas station. A building the size of this fucking room. I know. And and you you think that you standing six feet away from me is going to make a difference? You believe that? There's no way you believe that. There's no way, dude. Man, I probably lost about ten thousand followers on Facebook. I picked up the camera and just started screaming at it. I was mad, and everybody well, got I mean, so they, pissed off at me. If somebody farts six feet away from you, you're gonna fucking. <laughs> well, that's that's what I'm saying. You're gonna, the whole place is gonna know. That's that's one of the things that I said. I said I have no problem farting in public. Yeah, exactly. Because everybody's wearing a mask, and you would think, you would think, <laughs> you would think that if you smell a fart through that thing, you would think, well, shit, is this thing keeping me safe? <laughs> <laughs> But I, had to, I had to be in the car with you, bro. I had to drive you guys in the truck. <laughs> I made it through. I survived. <laughs> but yeah, no, it it, uh, it didn't work that way. Just there's just no common sense, man. Scary as fuck. I know because I feel like now it's gone to where you know here in Texas there's this cicada bugs, you know, in the trees, and it's the great 200 year where the cicadas all come up out of the trees, and uh, they have a CBS came out with a story saying there's hypersexualized zombie. I'm not fucking kidding. I have, hold on, let me read this to you. Okay, I'm not even fucking kidding. Hypersexualized like, zombie hyper, bugs. Hypersexualized. Okay, like this is how I know we're at a point of crazy's gone beyond crazy because why would you, you know, like, like, what, like. What you know, like I, I was like I was like this is somebody has to be having a blast, being like you want me to fuck up people, all right, <laughs> give me the fucking computer. That would be me if that was my job. Like you guys want me to make up some stories? <laughs> fuck yeah, here's one I would make up. Hypersexual zombies or cadas that are infected with sexually transmitted fungus expected to emerge this year. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you sexually transmit fungus to a bug? That means it's if it's sexually transmitted. Well, they're just horny ass fucking hyper sexualized zombies or <laughs> <laughs> Well, 
so sexually transmitted by whom? So, so if the if it's if it's sexually transmitted, I don't have to worry about it because I'm not going to fuck a bug. <laughs> I know, but, but I think what they're trying they're trying I think what they're trying to sell though is that 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 we don't know that the circada population is dealing with hypersexualized fucking STDs. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Like, you know what I mean? Like, next thing you know, it's going to be like all the fucking deer and elk fucking have fucking HIV and they're fucking fucking. And your campsite at Yellowstone's full of it fucking, their, their poop full of HIV or something. You know, like, that's the whole fucking crazy part about it all. I just really am like, wow, to see that become like people buy that. When, and you know, it's like that story's next to an AI fucking princess who I don't give a fuck about and already she fucking did ai so why like am i gonna be emotional that she got cancer no because it's ai but i think people have to start getting that i think because like there's one of like the like okay we got to soften the shit and get out of the program but then there's that where that hard aries is like the warrior of kind of like am i really gonna give a fuck about a fake ass fucking person who's making and pulling the heartstrings on fucking people that she has cancer that we have to all fucking like ruin our fucking Facebook days. Fucking, I can't believe you said fucking that. She has cancer. <laughs> like, I can't imagine the person who says that and goes home and fucking like, she probably is screaming at her TV fucking because it ruined the wood that was a tree that it sits on on her nightstand. Like, people are really getting lost emotionally. Mm -hmm. And they're throwing out this desperation in me to keep a system going. Because if you really think about it, in all societies when they crash, what creates a new society is somebody who goes, well, we need as many people as we can to build the new place. Yeah. And that's why all society is always built off slaves, right? Mm -hmm. So what they're really trying to do is build slavery. Mm -hmm. Which we already are in in a weird oh, way. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. But it's like <clears throat> the program that the slave trade that we've been living in has been working has come to its end. So they have to find a new way to make people feel like excited to be a slave again. Yeah. And, and, and I think like I think anytime they try to do the health thing, it doesn't work unless some people really are scared of hypersexualized zombie or cicadas. <laughs> and what's weird is that's only one part of the population, right? Because cicadas are only in the South here, right? It's not like I'm in California worried that, you know, the palm trees are full of hypersexualized cicadas, fucking, you know? But like, it's like, okay, why are they targeting those people? And then, like, what do they target on another part? That's what I always find the interesting part is like, like with ticks, I never have had to worry about ticks my whole life. They don't, they're not sitting in California fucking waiting to give you Lyme disease. But I know a lot of people in California from Lyme disease, and that's how I know they're not from California. Mm. Whenever I hear somebody in California say they have Lyme disease, I'm like, I feel bad because I'm like, that sucks. But I'm like, you're not from here, huh? They're like, no, yeah, I'm from the northwest or northeast, or I'm from, you know, back east somewhere. I'm in the south, or I'm in the, you know, I'm like, Man, and we already know that they already fucking did that with the ticks, right? So when I look at a hypersexualized circada, I'm like, that seems like Bill Gates was jerking off with open AI <laughs> <laughs> and some fucking insects, you know? Yeah. Well, they were actually fucking dumping mosquitoes over LA. Yeah. They like they had planes. I saw video footage of planes right. flying low dumping mosquitoes and that year i i, I have a, like a weird blood type i guess they don't bite me i'm rh negative a, a negative <laughs> and uh but leah though she has one of those blood types that the mosquitoes love so she could not go outside for five seconds before she was ate up that's and, how i am really yeah that's they, what i was saying you're an aquarius oh <laughs> they bite the aquarius blood and go oh it's cold <laughs> <laughs> it's uranian <laughs> <laughs> oh, weird tasting. It's different. Hey, Let me find a Leo. That's pretty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but man, that's it's crazy. I mean, uh, are they gonna are they gonna actually like start dumping those things on the cities? Well, like, what was crazy was those mosquitoes were they were bioengineered to 
to not have a certain ability to basically the, the mosquitoes from South America came up that carry Zika and all these other fucking supposed viruses, right? Which are actually more like COVID. I always said at the beginning, I'm like, I think that part of COVID too was Z, was just mosquitoes, Zika virus, like because the same fucking thing. But they're supposedly like hybrid fucking made mosquitoes that can't carry the fucking more like hardcore virus, supposedly. But like already when you're twisting nature like that, right? You're taking mosquitoes and you're pulling out a part of like their gene and trying to replace it. That's like an mRNA mosquito, if you really think about it. And so the weird part and the scary part is during the Black Plague, which we're in right now since the population for the first time is falling like it. What happened? The fucking fleas, something weird happened to the fleas where they couldn't let the digestion of the blood that they drank digest. It, they kept filling up and filling up and so they would keep biting and biting. Oh, shit. Right? Really? Yeah, and then that's what happened is they, they would fucking get bacteria and the fucking plague virus all over their fucking shit because they kept going to person to person and biting and biting and biting and they weren't filled up and they would get really big oh, their bellies shit. and fucking right so it's almost like did somebody fuck with the fucking guarantee it, back then oh. in the 1340s like, dude i guarantee you know? it you know how much technology they had back then right like way more than we and know it about came from the mongolian empire in china guarantee like it Right, so it was like it's weird that it comes from the same place. Nothing against that area, right? But obviously, there's something. What sucks is the patterns. There's also the part of the patterns that keep showing up, and it's like fuck. You know, I was doing a deep astrology this week. Like the Civil War, there was a great comet that showed up, and a lot of them looked at it as like, man, the country's divided, all that, and this comet and the was like identifying itself because it's split into two. Mm, yeah. And what's crazy is the comet that we have right now that they're calling a devil comet that already is split in using the, the, the idea of like where it's coming at the front of it and the trail that it starts to build is using it as devil horns. Mm -hmm. But what's really interesting is it's getting closest to the sun here over the next week after this eclipse. It could break into two. Yeah. And like that's where it's, e you know, that's kind of the universe kind of showing that that's kind of the omen that's going to happen. But it's like, I think people have to start like, you don't want to give up, but you can't force people to change. And that's what I think is hard is like focusing on just like, how do you as an individual be who you truly are as your most vulnerable, true self and make a difference? A lot of it is just being yourself. There is no special sauce of like than what you do with it. It's like just how you do yourself and be yourself. I think a lot of people think it's like some sort of formula when the formula is your own formula. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to try and be Rich Lop. Like, I don't know how. <laughs> since I'm not Rich Lop. Right? You don't want to. <laughs> right. Exactly. We all like our, we have to like ourselves again. Yeah. And I think that, you know, shedding off a lot of this stuff right now in ourselves is the best case scenario to really getting the collective to come together because it's us in, it's us that's in between all of each other in a collective setting right now. Yeah. It's nothing about, well, these people are this way and that. Uh, it's about your own responsibility now. Just like, am I being my full self? And that gets into really scary places about your honesty, about what you're happy with in your life and what you're not. And if you're just projecting that on some outside circumstance, because the problem with Libra is a lot of people attach Scorpio with outside energy. Libra is the horizon, other side of Aries, right? And that's the so, so identity of what I want. And then Libra is where we look towards that and see ourselves connecting to it. People are always going, well, that's the bridge I want to cross. Up. Uh, I fucking started to go. I couldn't feel it right away. And I guess the bridge is broken. And yeah. It's like that, like, you have to build the bridge. And 
Also, you know, sometimes it's okay if the other side of the bridge doesn't frequency match. Like, mm-hmm. I think people get so butthurt over, like, God, I wanted this and I can't have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted this relationship or I wanted this person or I wanted this thing or I wanted this job. It's like, you know what? The fact it didn't work is your fucking most saving grace of all time. Mm-hmm. It's not you. That's so people are attaching to fake shit and pushing it as far as they can taking loans to get it's like even without a loan you're taking a loan out on your life whenever you take something you know isn't aligned yeah because you want to just see it anyway yeah and they'll say some of the most fucking ridiculous shit to try to twist it you know like one thing i don't know if we've talked about this before but one thing i have hear people say at least once a week they'll say something to the effect of there's nothing worse than meeting the right person at the wrong time ever Mm. heard that I'm like, how fucking stupid do you think the universe is? Like, have you ever watched a spider build a web? You ever, you right. ever just watched, like, how the fuck does that bug know how to shit that sticky string out of its ass and build this fucking thing that catches its food? I know. Or watch a bird build a nest? How the fuck does that bird know how to do that? That's how intelligent and the universe bring is. bring back a worm and feed it to the little yeah. babies. That's how intelligent the universe is. So you think the universe is smart enough to tell that bug how to shit a string out of its ass and build its own fucking food making mechanism, but it's too stupid to give you the right person at the right time. Right. You know, like it just, it blows my mind. Well, and I think the worst is when you get that person that the universe wants and then you sabotage it, which we all do. And I think a lot of the healing right now is how we sabotage our greatest things. The number one thing I get in readings is regrets. Or with you, with your tarot, it's like how many people are just trying to get back their fucking ex-partner? Yeah. Oh, what's my ex doing? Mm -hmm. What's my ex doing? What's the past person? Yep. It's like, and then they want to know the future person at the same time. Yeah. You can't have both. Yeah. You know, like, what are you fucking doing right now? (laughs) You try to have a circle jerk with the ex and the new one. Yeah. That's gonna go down real well. Yeah. I have to give that lecture at least... Cuckolding the past. At least fucking four times a week where somebody says, oh, does does the past person still love me? Oh, who's coming in next? I'm like, whoa, hold up. <laughs> That's a lot quick. Right? Like, what the <laughs> fuck? What are you doing? Which one is it? Like, I don't know. I've always been the type. I couldn't... When I love somebody, I don't care about nobody else. Right. Like, if something was to happen with me and Leah right now, right. I don't give a fuck about nobody else. I don't want nobody else. Right. Like, I've never even understood that mentality. Like, it comes from a place of emotional codependency where I have a void in my heart and I need to fill it. Yeah. You know, I just, so it's like you're not connecting with people for the connection. You're connecting with people to distract yourself from your own pain, you know, and. Yeah, and then turning that pain into frustration that's like, well, let me put this as this is the part that's making me unhappy instead of like, why am I unhappy? Oh, I'm being called out by all the situations in my life, including probably my partner, that's like a part that I don't want to face. So it's easier to just say, I'm frustrated. I'm over this. I want to... I want to get Rich Lop to tell me how my past one is doing because they don't know they're about to be my past one and the future one that I'm doing at the same time. You want to be the bug that fucking squirts out fucking literally two spider webs at the same time? Because that's, like, like, that's a good analogy. Is like the universe can't spit both out at the same time. Right? Yeah. Well, I mean... Like, like trying to go to a soda machine, like I want a Sprite, no, I want a fucking Starry too. It's like it's going to do one at a time. <laughs> well, not only that, but, but I'll go back to, to my go-to, okay? The primary law is the law of vibration. The secondary mm-hmm. law is the law of attraction. So you only attract in according to the frequency in which you vibrate. While you're still energetically tied to a past person, which you are, because if you wasn't, you wouldn't even be asking about them. You're vibrating at the same frequency that attracted that person. So while you're still vibrating at the frequency that attracted that person, all you can attract in is another person vibrating at the same frequency, thus manifesting the same outcome. And and Which is is a lot like past lives. The more that you stay connected to your past life. Yep, yep. Your future life doesn't really get yep. the honor to have the red carpet rolled out because it's like, no, I'm going to still have that past life. Like, I love past lives, but it's like kind of like that. Oh, that was a fun story, but that's not the story now. They're good lessons, but they're not my focus. It's not like I wake up every day like my past life. <laughs> you know? Some people do. 
But like, it's an interesting one to kind of look at the comparison. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It is. I mean, energetically, coming together with a past life karmic soulmate is energetically identical to reconciling with somebody you just broke up with six months ago on an energetic right. level. Because, you know, what creates a karmic contract like that is if we had a soul contract in a past life and we fucked it up and oh, we never yeah. healed from it, never closed the cycle out, never released it, you just carry that energy with you all the way over to the other side and into this lifetime. And energetically, the two people coming together, it's just, it's no different than reconciling from somebody you broke up with a year ago, you know? Well, do you think it's different now? Because like, I remember when I was young, it's like, if I hung out with a buddy and he just was, or a guy I thought would maybe be a buddy and he just wasn't cool in person, it was like, okay, yeah, he was weird, you know? I'm not gonna hang out with that dude. But with social media today, it's like people keep getting, 18,000 different looks at the same person through social media. It's like, yeah, I know that person is not cool. Or maybe you went on a date with somebody and it's not cool. And it's like, oh, but the social media, they look kind of good today. Even though I said they were ugly like 18 times, now they look kind of good today because I'm feeling empty inside. So I'm going to try again. I think a lot of what's happened of why everybody's feeling like so lost in relationships, it goes with the astrology of Saturn and Pluto and Libra, which I said would come to its end fucking with the Capricorn transit in 2020 and that going forward you can no longer play in that fucking retarded game that people played since fucking 1983 of relationships. That, that the social media thing has created people to like look at somebody that are like already like let's say they saw him on a dating site and it was like yeah swipe left fucking, probably fucking gross. Oh, but hold on, they look a little better in the light today. <laughs> like automatically, you're already saying like, I don't want that old fucking meat stick that's been at the fucking one fucking roadhouse fucking gas station that, you know, is run by a mom and pop store that's been sitting there for four years. But because I'm a little hungry, yeah, it looks a little better in the light. <laughs> eat that meat stick. Like, what? And then you mix all the shit that you're talking about. And that's why you're just seeing the fucking, so many people so lost, empty, unfulfilled, or afraid to be themselves to people, mm -hmm. really, because that, that comes back to the beginning of this, the fake show people put on. It's like, okay, like, yeah, this is my life. I fucking did this in my life. I was yeah. this, I was that. That's where you find true partnership in people where it's like, I can fucking be myself. Mm -hmm. Yep. But if you put on that, like, I'm too afraid to say this or da da da, da like, who cares? if they don't like you because whatever it is, fuck them. That's, yeah. It's not even about saying fuck them. It's just like, fuck it, the situation. Like, it's okay to, that's not a match. It's a lonely road to walk because I walked that road for many, many years, but it'll weed through all the bullshit. You know, I've always been yeah. that type. This is me. This is, this is me. This is what I'm about. This is the dumb shit I've done. Here's where I'm at in life now. Here's my goals. I'm not leading with my best foot forward. Take it or leave it. Most people are like, oh, he's weird. Oh, well, fuck. Okay. But at least I would rather have that than get tangled up into some fucked up drama and this nasty mess where you thought I was one person and then six months down the line, my true colors come bubbling up to the surface, you know? And well, yeah, it's kind of like I'm a guy of a dick, right? And if some chick wanted me to not have a dick before we got in a relationship, right? I'm not going to go cut off my dick to hopefully get the relationship. <laughs> but that's what people do, right? It's kind of like, oh, well, I don't like that you do this. Yeah. Well, okay. It's like, okay, I'm not going to try to be with that person. But mm -hmm. no, people go cutting off their dicks. <laughs> like, oh, fuck. Okay, here you go. Yeah. Oh, I kind of like the dick. I just didn't like yours. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Fuck. That was my job. You know, like, I didn't like that you worked here, you know, and I quit it, so fuck. Oh, man. You know, like, that's what people are doing. Like, I'm, let me change who I am before. I mean, when you're in a relationship, that's where you can make those, like, I call them, like, very slight, you know, course corrections mm -hmm. on the course together. Yeah. Right? But people are trying to do that with these major course corrections right away. It's like, I drink, let's say, even though I don't, right? 
let's say somebody drinks, somebody else doesn't. It's like, all right, uh, I don't drink. I guess I'll drink because they drink. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's like, okay, you just fucking went into the most retarded situation of your life. It's really easy to see right there. The second you're just like, you know what? Yeah, I guess I'll do that. And that's why I use a dramatic thing like, oh, I really don't want a guy with a dick. Like, oh, okay, let me cut my dick up for you and send you a pic on text. Mm -hmm. And then I'll post it on Instagram. So I really pump myself up to look good. So then you'll see it. And maybe I'll get a couple likes and comments to make you think that I'm a popular person at the same time. <laughs> and if you try to win somebody over in that way, you've already lost. Yeah. It's and that's where you see in culture today that people have, that's their actual like attraction energy is like, I'm doing this to show this, to get the comments, to get the likes. And hopefully that person sees that. Mm -hmm. and, and hopefully it convinces them. Yeah. If you're trying to convince somebody, it's like not even worth the fucking time. Yeah. Yeah. That's sad shit, man. And that's where that's like heartbreaking for humanity because then people do that at their work. Like, oh, well, let me see. My, my boss should see that I showed up early to work. So I'm going to park in this spot. <laughs> Maybe my boss will give me a raise if I'm at the water cooler fucking wearing this fucking whatever. Yeah. But whenever you do that, it might give you a temporary gain for a second, but it's a fucking huge loss that comes. With, it's a debt that you can't. The interest is too high. And yeah. that's why I think we see in the world that the, the, with money and monetary, it's such a relationship to the collective and what it's manifesting, right? The whole interest rates being high, that means everybody's taking too much interest out on the things that they go for in their selves, right? It's like, oh, I'm going to fucking create this debt to myself. I have to pay back that I can't pay back to become something I don't want to be or that I don't need to be. To impress somebody you don't like. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really just of the self, right? Like, oh, I'm going to stop doing what I love doing. Yeah. Right? And I'm going to go into a place I don't even know because maybe this will be the better place. It's like, well, the last one who told you to go fucking into a cave and with Hillary Clinton and fucking do a blood sacrifice to children didn't come out too well. <laughs> but I think that's where you get to the Diddy stuff. People are like, well, Diddy's party. Woohoo. Go eat a pizza. Go play with Justin Bieber's butthole. <laughs> Like, where in the fuck does that become a thing that somebody... Because people aren't creating that idea. So people are so easily swayed. That's the scariest part of the P. Diddy shit to yeah. me. Or the Epstein, right? It's like, humanity, we don't think that way. But somebody has gotten so toxic down that line and wanting to create people to be like, oh my God, like, I can get this if I do this. Yep. And it's that fucking weird. Like, go over there and fucking do that on the couch and make sure you're, like, turned to the left so my camera can get... Oh, I mean, my um, my lighting can get good for you, too. You know, it's, like, fucking crazy because, like, what was just released by his bodyguard is, like, the amount of people and the amount of celebrities and the amount of people that people have looked up to or whatever is going to blow their minds. Mm -hmm. Well, what blew my mind, you before we went live here, you were saying that Ashton Kutcher's about to get yeah, indicted. Yeah, like it looks like Ashton Kutcher because he's best friends with Diddy. Well, the la oh, wow, the last and I saw. he had his whole, like, he had, go yeah. protect the kids. Yeah. And then he quit that just recently. Then he protected his buddy from the 70s show who just raped all those women. Oh. So it was a front. Yeah. And then remember, he almost died a couple years ago randomly from some like being paralyzed from some weird thing obviously it was from probably the shot the fucking you know and then like his whole story of coming back and going on a hike with 60 minutes or whatever right obviously he was hanging out with probably fucking you know when matthew perry yeah like passed and like they put that whole bat he put his batman thing up and all that weird shit like, a lot of these people I don't think are around. No, no, I don't think, I think they're gone. And they're yeah. just, like, using AI and using old pics and using shit. Because they've been cleaning house a long time now. Yeah, since about 2020, 2021. Because to me, around. I feel like I'm watching kind of, like, the records of things. 
I don't really feel like like it, every day people are going through that, but not that again. That could trigger people because like there's probably horrible shit still happening on the planet. Yeah, yeah. But when it comes to like this more from the program side, in many ways too, the more that it comes out, it it kind of triggers people to maybe go do shit like that. That's kind of the weird part about it all. Mm-hmm. So just as much as people are obsessed with taking it down, the more that they try to show about it or whatever, it gives a new guy ideas just like in fucking you know Hannibal Lecter's world like fucking you know to go be a cannibal yeah well even the whole idea when they had that whole barbecue guy fucking in Haiti and taking over just recently and they they, all they did about the Haiti thing it wasn't about the people and what they're going through it was like no the cannibals are fucking running through and took over right and they just keep showing you the videos and popping people in the street and fucking roasting them for dinner Mm mm-hmm Right? It's like, are they preparing people for what? Cannibalism? I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like the majority of them are gone. I mean, it, going back to what we talked about a couple of months ago when Cat Williams came out. Right. You know, and he said, all lies will be exposed yeah. in 2024. And for, for him to come out and just feel so comfortable saying that, I was like, oh, okay. It already happened. It already happened. Right. And he knows it already happened. So that's why, because if you, I remember I saw an interview, you may have seen it maybe seven or eight years ago where somebody was saying it was, it was Cat Williams and they were talking about the Illuminati and he was nervous. He was scared. He's like, uh, I'm not going to say nothing. All I'm going to say is, uh, I don't want to join. And that's all he would say. He was nervous. He was scared. So now for him to come out like very confident, very bold, feeling very safe and comfortable that tells me it's already done yeah and going into very d- big details like h- i didn't take 50 million you see how they all wear dresses yeah because if you notice all these celebrities and and all of them including will ferrell you name them like it's gonna be every name you didn't like if they ever wore a dress in a movie as a man that's like a part of the ritual like that you've been marked like you were one of the ones mm. the book, right and that's what he said he's like you don't never saw me wear a fucking dress but you see all these motherfuckers out here wearing a fucking dress. Mm-hmm. Like it's nothing. And he goes, I knew about it. And then he went on Joe Rogan and dropped the Emerald Tablets. And then he dropped yeah. the fucking thing deeper into the dress. He was like, why do you think? Th-? He's like, I knew the trans movement was coming way before because they were doing it in Hollywood. They were doing it with the fucking men to fucking be like, okay, this is the deal. You make you want your 50 million, you wear a dress on a fucking movie. Or like if you think what like what like that girl white girls and shit you know mm-hmm. all of that it goes deep yeah like why like what like why and all the SNL skits and all of it is like why are you wearing a fucking dress I mean I don't why lie. are you dressing as a fucking girl I honestly never even thought twice about it either. Like, I, I mean, it, it bamboozled me, too. I just thought, no, eh, well, that's just comedy. Or, like, when Chaz Bono came out in 2011, right, and grew a beard. And that was, you know, that's Cher's son or, or daughter, right, or whatever. Forgot. It's hard to keep up. <laughs> but, like, that's when I started doing this this style of show. Like, I was doing it with Chris back in the day with Astro Gossip, and then I was doing another show, and fucking, I remember being like, what the fuck is this? And then they put him on, like, Dancing with the Stars and all this shit. And you could see how they slowly rolled this out. Mm-hmm. Right? And then what's crazy is they rolled it out to hardcore, you know, where it's like, get your fucking swimsuit tucking your dick in fucking at Target. <laughs> In the last year? Yeah. And then all the Epstein and now the Diddy stuff comes out. It's like the last big, like, gets right to where all the kids in school are having to read books about fucking sexual shit. Yeah. Right? That are fucking in second grade. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? All this is coming out. So it's like, that's how you know they, like ramped it up and got as many people as they could to sacrifice because the, it's the kid, the, the moms or the dads or even the people on the school boards got their little kickback. Those will be exposed. Like anybody who fell for that whole thing, all the people at the Target Corporation, right, who fucking went for it too and pushing on ads and got rid of it. And like you go to the kids' clothing department and it's like, 
oh, no, we don't want boys to be boys. It's girls' clothes. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like all of it came to like this high point, and then this is what comes out? That means if you bought that bait the same way if you bought the bait of COVID, it's like they, they're doing everything to release the holy fuck. And they've been slowly... And then it's gotten so crazy with the COVID thing that it's the biggest elephant in the fucking room. The biggest elephant in the room that was prior to that was this weird Hollywood shit. That means the big elephant of COVID's about to come out. Good. Fuck. Right? Because if you just kind of like look at that whole thing and where it's been with that whole trans thing and the fucking that's how you're marked and that's how you do it all. And even like Diddy fucking all that weird shit. And that's why Tupac called that motherfucker out so hard. And then he died. Yeah. And, now and like he was so hard about that. Like whenever he talked about bad boy records and shit, he was like, I'll fucking make sure you all you motherfuckers don't fucking live and fucking grow and your kids don't grow. That's what he said. I know people in here could back me up. That the motherfucker screamed that and hit him up. Yeah. Right. Like that. And all you motherfucking kids don't grow. Yeah. He was just jamming it the other night. I know. Fuck yeah. Because yeah, I always knew that motherfucker spit fucking truth. Yeah. And, you know, if I play that song for a normie, they fucking are like, what are you listening to? Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that fucking the Tupac was straight truth, motherfucker. You yeah. know what I mean? And even Biggie was truth. Like, the, like, like, he was talking about taking shits on bitches just because they wanted to be with him. And that's true. Yeah. That they would do it. Right? Like, they, like they were trying to show, like, these people are fucking retarded out there. They were, like, showing it to people, like, don't be like this. Mm -hmm. Don't be so desperate that you're fucking letting me shit on you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's why Biggie was hard too. Like, I was like, damn, motherfuckers just really <laughs> like he's like laughing in the fucking track like right before he's like, oh shit, I had this big fucking want me to take a shit out of me. You know what I mean? Like, like <laughs> it's like, oh shit, right? Like, you know, like that's where I'm like, damn, and then fucking what happened to the whole like hip hop community that's so conscious turned into this fucking unconscious shit. And then P. Diddy tried to be like, I'll be missing. Yeah. Like I'm like, I remember that track came out. I was just like, this is the last thing that Tupac and Biggie want to hear. <laughs> the gayest fucking song, like pizza party song. <laughs> I was playing at every Chuck E. Cheese back in fucking the late 90s, like, I'll be missing in every dance, fucking like. <laughs> but it was all right in front of people's face. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the other thing about Aries, it's always right in front of your face, whatever it is, right? But there's that one <laughs> thing, and I, I would love to cover this and what you think is like that new psychological disease that they're saying that faces that look like the people are saying that they're seeing in real life faces that look like whether they're reptilian, but they more look like how those AI faces look all like all weird. But that's a new disease. A new disease. What? So they just dropped in the last two weeks that there's a new psychological disease that people see with their eyes on people's faces that they look like reptilians or alien or like in an AI picture, you know, that's really shitty how the people in the background, their faces look all like warped. Yeah. That that's now a psychological disorder. So. So it's kind of like when somebody's AI, they are going to be like. Oh, right? so. Like you're psychological. Yeah, yeah. You have a psych problem. Okay. Right? Like you, have a, you have an issue. Like you, that's not, that's actually not what they look like, even though that's what you are really seeing. They're going to try and take a whole populace and make them think that they've gone mad. Wow, that could, right? that could like go so much worse than because you, you got to think little kids would be like, oh that face looks fucked up. I better not say nothing. They're gonna exactly. think I have this disease or some exactly. shit. You know? That's fucked up. So they're creating the idea of like if you don't fall in line and you're crazy because you you see like it's weird. It's on on X, but a bunch of celebrities have been posting selfies with like what they say is like their audience behind them and their whole, all the audience faces are the weird AI look. And they're just sort of keeping it up as if it's normal. The same way the palace keeps up fucking AI fucking Kate. And then they're throwing this out there. 
Well, that's why I say it's so important. I bet you they'll have this new fucking drug from Pfizer. Be like fucking zombie hack fucking face fucking pill. <laughs> you know, and then everybody on the street's going to want it. And smoke it. That's why I say it's so important that, you know, you don't give a fuck what people think because they use your fear of other people's opinion to their advantage. That's their biggest weapon is shaming and manipulation. Everybody is so afraid of yeah. public humiliation, and it's you got to get out of that. You have got to get out of that. You got to you got to start walking in that that mentality of I don't care what you think. I don't care if you think I'm an asshole. I don't care if you think I'm a racist or a homophobe or a misogynist or a whatever other fuck, fucking name they like to throw at us. So you right. can think in one hand and shit in the other. I don't care. You have to be walking in that energy. Yeah. And and if we can get everybody to stand up and walk in that energy, well then they won't end up being ditties because that was the whole Tupac fucking thing. It was like that motherfucker rolled how he fucking rolled. And yeah. he didn't give a fuck because that guy loved people, he loved God, he fucking loved treating people good. And anybody who didn't do that, he fucking called out and was like, fuck these motherfuckers, right? Yeah. That's who he was. He just didn't want to go out and fucking just pop fucking homeboys that were fucking just stupid. No, he was after the people that fucking literally were fucking cheats, liars, stealers, and fucking weird ass fucking people because they were fake as fuck. That's what's crazy is it's like the mentality and then the walk, like just like like just walking with like I know who I fucking am. I'm not worried about what these people think. I fucking know you look like a fucking weird thing. I mean, already the doctors gave experimental shots. Now you're gonna be like when they, when you see their face like whoa whoa like you know what i mean and it's like not even in person it'll probably be on fucking facetime because doctors will all be like that because they're probably all dead after they fuck everybody's gonna get i told everybody like the first that we're in the astrology this year of the first raid in america that ever happened the first riot and it was against the doctors because they were going into the fucking graveyards and they were digging up the graves of dead people to do experiments with yeah. And the people found out about it in America right after the Constitution was ratified. The fucking people went to the doctors and fucking killed all the doctors. Mm. Well, so they, anybody with the shot, and their doctor told them to get the shot. And when the more shit comes out and more people die and more shit comes, guess where they're going to start running? That CBS they went to. That fucking doctor they went to. Right? So they're all going to be fucking AI teledocs. <laughs> Do you see me as bleh, bleh, yes? Oh, you need the pill. <laughs> Instead of just being like, fuck you, motherfucker. You know, like, you fucking AI piece of shit. I'm going to hack your shit. Fucking, you know what I mean? Yeah. Fucking, you know. Well, this will probably be the year that they roll out the tribunals then. Because you know motherfuckers are going to stay in charge. You know yeah. they're going to fucking... And it fucking, could be have already done in like just a recorded version of it. Well, I've, I've heard a lot of tale from... Like I've said, I'm very, very picky and choosy who I follow and who I listen to. And I have heard tale that they were doing it in the White House. That's why it was boarded up. Right. But they also had fucking um, uh, military ships. And they were doing it on ships, you know? Which, for, which would make sense of why you're seeing so much Navy shit happen. And with the idea of all these wars going on. Yeah. Or like the New York earthquake. Yeah. Oh, that's bullshit. Fucking. Right? Like New York, bedrock, fucking granite. Fucking solid granite. The biggest granite. buildings in the world, the most solid place in the world. Yeah. And it's like, oh, well, we're happy it didn't happen downtown. Of course, it would not fucking happen there. Yeah. <laughs> like people are retarded. Yeah. They're blowing up underground tunnels. I know. Just like the, the earthquake a few months ago. It happened when I was fucking live on YouTube. And there was an earthquake. And then it said, earthquake warning. And I, and I said, I'm not from California. I asked right. Leah, I said, is that normal? They give earthquake warnings? She said, no, I've never seen that in my life. And I'm like, ah, dude, I guarantee you they're down there blowing shit up. Well, and then they've admitted it that they've got food and water down there and like these tunnels that are big enough to carry all of America down there. Yeah. Like who's left of the 95 million or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's fucking weird. Mm -hmm. So when they say the infrastructure bill. It's down there. I yeah. don't see no fucking shit except like, yeah, I saw in San, we saw in San Antonio, they were building some new fucking freeway shit. But I remember you and I were looking at them like, that's so weird. It looks fucking like 1970. Yeah. 
Like, it didn't look all nice, like new. It looked like fucking toothpicks. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, all this fucking shit is like something always different than what it is. And especially like right now, like I'm just like looking at this whole fucking thing with like, where is this all gonna like look? Is that it's gonna come back to us? Everybody thinks the next president's gonna save the day. It's kind of like, <laughs> no, no, you know. And you and I were talking too over when we were driving here. It's like they're by. It's gonna be Biden for sure, or they're gonna replace him at the DNC for the candidate. But he'll still be president. Or he dies, or I don't think they'll 25th Amendment him because they, they always want to like, oh, we want to make sure his legacy, even though it doesn't matter, right? Well, I mean... like, But they're going to keep him in for the financial crash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not going to... Like, even if Trump is to come back, they're not going to bring Trump back. They're not going to have the new financial system come out on Biden's watch. They're going to have it crash on Biden's watch. Right. And then more than likely, I don't know who they're going to use. I don't know if they're going to use Trump or what. But if Trump does come back, then he's the one that's going to usher in the, the, the good system, which it, that might be a fucked up thing because you have to think it's not even going to be what it used to be because the United States Corporation is bankrupt. It's bankrupt. Right. So we can't have a president of a bankrupt corporation. That's why right. Biden is not, he's, he's, a, he's not a well, president. Yeah, and like, yeah, it's the first time they used AI as a CEO. <laughs> yeah, and, and so, so even if Trump was to come back, he would be, I think, the 19th president. He would be considered the 19th president of the Constitutional Republic of the United right. States. So it's not even going to be the same system. By the time 2030 gets here, we're not going to have presidents and prime ministers. That, that whole fucking system globally is going to crash. It's well, not just the, the financial system. monarchy crashes, I mean, that, that, that's, I think, what they've set up, is the monarchy to crash in England, which is the exact... We have to remember, we always look at America and the revolution. What was the revolution? The monarchy losing ground of the 13 colonies. Did the monarchy crash? Well... King George went mad, right? So the idea of right now seeing the madness of the royal family is no weird thing for this transit. But the idea of the monarchy crashing, that takes out the fucking, the English fucking bank, right? It takes out the, one of the biggest banks in the part of the central banking system. It takes out so much of the fabric of what people have been holding on to for over a thousand years. It takes out all those ideas in Canada, Australia, these prime ministers, these governor generals, this whole, like, shit. And, like, if you think of, like, look at Trudeau, like, this guy fucking obviously is a plant fucking mm -hmm. situation to kind of wake people up fucking, like, what the fuck happened to Canada? It's all connected. It's all connected. And it's in a weird moment here because it's, like, this whole world's about to fucking go through its zero point. It's, like, about to go through, like, well... Things have to change, and then they use the term the Great Reset on purpose to scare people mm -hmm. of the actual positive reset that's yeah. going to happen and yeah. make you try to manifest to hold on to what's horrible. Yep. They are going to try to roll out their Great Reset. They're going to roll that out. That's what people have to understand. It's not going to just be overnight. It's going to crash, and then the good financial system is going to come, and you're going to be a millionaire overnight. It's not going to work that way. Right, that's the biggest trap. The crypto trap right now, the fucking stock market trap. Yeah. yeah. Or even all the entitlements. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, that's not, the number one thing that this election is going to bring up is we got to cut all these programs. And mm -hmm. that's what they're waiting to see what Democrat can try and agree with the Republicans. And both of them, that's the secret is both sides are going to cut all the shit. Because then they won't be able to live. They won't be able to get paid. The only way they get paid is they cut Social Security. We're $175 trillion that we promised the future of doing. But the worst is they take all the money from Social Security when they started it, and they didn't hold <coughs> it in a bank like they're supposed to. They spent all the fucking money mm -hmm. and then got more debt on it. Yep. So anybody who's thinking, well, I pay. You keep paying a fucking... A Murdoch who's like fucking like, ah, I'm gonna fucking take the Ponzi scheme. Uh huh. Thanks. Yeah, I'm holding the money. It's doing real good. 
There's no money. He's like all these social programs and everything. I'm going to retire. I'm going to have all that shit from that. People don't even realize their money is not even in the bank. Yeah, it's not even in the bank. As soon as you put money in the bank, they take it and lend it I out. I know. Like, and they not lend it once, not twice, not thrice, multiple times yeah. out. Like, that's the most craziest part of the whole thing. So it's like, that's where this is the weird moment, too, where you look at, like, banks, loans, all that stuff. Like, they're willing to, everybody thinks they're going to cut the rates. Like, they are not. I just traded in my fucking GT500 Shelby for a fucking new truck because I'm cutting my cars down. And I had to get 14% interest because that's all they're given now mm. with that kind of car, right? And when I was talking to them, they're like, because they don't even check my credit. They don't do anything. They just, keep, they just give it to me. And they're like, that's what they're giving everybody right now with the low, that's their lowest interest rate because they're trying to make money because there's no money. So when you're starting to see that at fucking main things, mm -hmm. it's like, you think they're really going to cut the fucking rates? <laughs> There's no money being made. There's no, the inflation continues to grow. That's all intentional though. Yeah. So it's like, you know, we see cancer rates at the highest. We also see people then going, I want to be an instant millionaire because I put $10 in fucking Bitcoin and it turns into a million in their head, you know? Yeah. When if you were to really do it, it's like, it doesn't do that. Like to become a Bitcoin millionaire, you had to have put like tens of thousands of dollars when it was at 300 bucks. You know what I mean? Like, and yeah. now where it's at, you know, like that, like people are, and then they think that about an altcoin, which there's not enough money to go around to create the amount of money that it would be worth to create the cap, like the, what the market cap would be of all these altcoins. So they're all like led into, they got rid of the penny stock schemes to where, you know, you can't call up anymore and be like, you want to buy this fucking stock for fucking four cents right now? They got rid of that. It's illegal. There's no more trading and calling up a, a customer and being like, oh, I got this fucking company. It's c killing it, right? Now it's all done on the internet through crypto and through these channels that they all fucking create their own coins, if you notice. Mm -hmm. They all fucking get paid by Celsius and what happened there. Look at, look, look at Sam Bankman Freed, all this shit. And anybody lost in the crypto thing, that's going to be the biggest pain. That's how they got the system because all that fiat currency that's all debt based went into a fucking coin that the government purposely doesn't really, they always tease that they're going to put the restriction on, but they don't, will never do it because they have the lever control that say, you lost it. Oh, and then all the debt money gets washed away to be blamed on these private citizens and people who put their money and faith into that. And mm -hmm. that helps roll out whatever the government. You need to trust us even more. Yeah. That's sad. It's going to be scary. Uh, I'm wondering, too, with all the shit the fucking news media has been putting out about the eclipse. Are they going to do something financially? I'm wondering. I brought my fucking gold with us I on know. the road. Yeah, you got your dinar. Just you in fucking, case. You brought gold in it, silver. Gold, shit. You silver. Have fucking lock somewhere. Fucking. <laughs> Good thing there's scorpions. Iraqi dinar, Vietnamese dong. Because <laughs> I don't know. Vietnamese dong. Yeah, yeah. I brought it all, man. Because you know, you've never hear. We've. I, I, I've heard of dozens of eclipses in my life. Never, ever in the history of ever, never has the fucking news been warning people about anything. They say, put your glasses on. That's about it. They don't, they don't say, oh, prepare emergency food, you know, and this and that. And I'm not saying I'm buying into the, the fear, but it's like, what, they're going to do something. Something. What, 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 what? Or are they just trying to get us scared for no reason? I don't know. No, I think it's, it's, it's more like the, the psych, psych tests that they do. It's very CIA-based. It's very much like, oh, like, let's see. Slow rollouts constantly. COVID was a slow rollout of like bigger shit. Like an asteroid's gonna hit the earth. Or yeah, the solar eclipse is another soft rollout to test the things that are actually happening that they are too afraid to say. Because let's be real, they're all pussies. They're too afraid to always say what's really happening. So they'll create the biggest fucking lies of all time. So to me, it's more of like, how are they gonna react to this? Because we really need to tell them this, but we're not ready yet. I want to know exactly how they're going to feel. I want to know if they're going to come from my house. 
like like Netanyahu right now, right in Israel. They fucking, it's so Pluto at the end of Capricorn and Aquarius, like they all fucking came with torches to his house last week trying to fucking kill him. <laughs> right? That's what everybody's thinking about fucking right now in these things that control the media and all that shit. It's like, are they going to fucking come to my house or like how people come to the judge's house off their fucking choices, Supreme Court judges and all this shit. People are like not, people, all those elite or people, th there's no power there. They're all fucking so afraid. And they're doing tests like this to go, how do they react? How do they react? How do they react? If we put signs, how many signs did you and I see since fucking the second we entered Texas where the, the eclipse isn't even going? The fucking right when we entered Texas fucking four, five, 500 miles ago, eclipse, be prepared. Yeah. Stop, don't move, and then leave late. Stay put, yeah, yeah. Stay put, leave late. The second we came in, yeah. it's not even going by there. This is a fucking huge ass state. Well, like even like in this, like, all these other towns are like ninety nine percent not even total eclipse. They're like, oh, eclipse! Like fucking be prepared. Fucking do that. Blah, 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 blah. You know what it's gonna do? It reminds me of COVID. So many people are not gonna go drive. Hmm. There's another way of them testing. Like, will they not drive if we tell them not to drive? <laughs> right? Like, they already got it in people's brains. Like. Well, I guess, you know, if I get there early, that's because it's going to be so packed and it's going to be so hard to do. It's a fucking eclipse. Yeah. You could be in a parking lot. You could be fucking jerking off in the fucking 7-Eleven parking lot. I watched the fucking, I've watched many eclipses in parking lots. Like people, people are like thinking it's like, get, it's July 4th, the fireworks. Get my fucking family and get the cooler out and fucking. It's a fucking eclipse. You watch it anywhere. You know, it's not like, oh my God, there's no parking over here, honey. But we're in the middle of a road in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> like if there was traffic, I'd just be like, all right, I'm pulling off the road here. I'm gonna sit in the back of the truck watch the eclipse. Like I'm not gonna sit in this traffic and just sit in my car. We didn't make it to the one spot I want to get to. <laughs> <laughs> what what spot is that? I don't know. The park. Yeah. Oh man. But. No, it was good to do this, bro. Fucking, especially with all you guys here. And I don't know. I, I feel like this show has been so evolved. I was telling Rich the, the beginning of the show doing the tarot. You know, Rich has said, like, he doesn't like being a tarot reader. It's not that. It's that it's the, the tarot community and how it's yeah. mm, questionable. Yeah. I mean, I'm, right? so many people got so pissed off at me for saying that. I don't know how to make it any more clear. I love the tarot. Yeah. It's fucking awesome. It's, I've, it's been a fascination of mine for many, many years. I just didn't want to be associated with those people on there. You know, I didn't want. No, it makes sense. I didn't want to be mixed in with that. And then as soon as I decided to put a couple of videos on my channel, it's like the universe shoved me into a corner and ripped everything away from me and said, you're either going to do this or you're not going to do nothing. I'm like, fuck, man. Okay. All right. You know, so it's not that I, I don't, I'm not dissing any other tarot readers right. I, or, or anything like that. I'm not shaming you if that's what you do. I, I, I just don't like being known for that. <laughs> it's just an ego thing. I would rather be known for something else, you know, but um, no, man, but talking about the show though, and the one year anniversary is coming up on the 10th. Right. So we'll be driving back, you know, and it's, it's been awesome, man. It's evolved into something that I've kind of had pictured in my mind for actually about a year or two before we actually did this. I, I was always thinking, man, you know what they need? They need like some kind of spiritual podcast, you know, right? You see all these podcasts and most of them are just rage bait, you know, know, people bitching and complaining and getting everybody pissed off and angry and whatnot. And it's like, we need some kind of fucking podcast that's spiritual. And, and it's cool to be able to see that manifest into reality. So, yeah. And it mixes in teaching a lot of weird stuff we're talking about. Spirituality is like so not this weird fucking like, it's everything. And I think spirituality now has become a place of like, what the fuck's going on? Because that's what you're asking in spirituality is, what the fuck am I? What the fuck is going on in my life? What the fuck is this? What yeah. the fuck is God? What the fuck is that? Right? But now we're at a place where it's like, Kate, 
I still love those questions and I still ask them. But these are the ones that we like we talked about today are the ones that we all are fucking thinking about more mm -hmm. because it connects back to those things like what is God and what am I and where am I here and all these kind of things because these things are just not making any sense mm -hmm. from the program point of view. Yeah, yeah. And so the program's beyond glitching, <laughs> right? Like I think a lot of us at least have watched the whole Matrix just like completely miss a whole fucking day's worth of fucking shit. Yeah. The Truman Show, fucking everybody on the fucking street stopped and took a piss, <laughs> you know, at the yeah. same time. So <laughs> the fuck's going on, you know? Yeah. And I think it was good, those Tarot's uh, episodes, because they were, they were like hours of like how much is in a just a tarot card, one tarot card, mm -hmm. let alone the whole deck, let alone a reading. But we all have so much that we can awaken through in any part of the divination tools or spirituality. And it doesn't matter what it is or what it looks like or what, you know, so many people are attached to how it's supposed to look and that's the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a big problem. That's a huge problem. That's the biggest problem in the spiritual community yeah. is that it, it's got to look like this and sound like this and you got to wear this and you got to put this crystal here and you got to say this little chant here. All, the, all those things are cool, but you know, you don't need any of that. No, you know? I mean, and if you have BPA plastic and Burger King. Like, <laughs> right. And, and like, and does that matter? Like, you know, like, does that make me less spiritual? Right, right. Yeah. Spirituality is an awareness. It's not what you eat. It's not your clothes. It's not how you speak. It's an awareness. Spirituality is an awareness of what you are. Yeah. You know, regardless of what you look like. And totally. Whatnot. And I think we're doing a pretty good job getting that message out here. I agree. Well, we did it here in Texas. We'll be doing another video here. We'll be doing the eclipse. We got our talks tomorrow. Yep. And we're going to have people on the show, too. That's like our next venture with mm -hmm. this. That'll be interesting. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. I was kind of hoping we'd have somebody on today, but I know. I guess we didn't have time for that, but. I know. It's already fucking. Well, we're, we're two hours. We lost two hours, so. Yeah. Weird. Well, much love to everyone out there, and thanks for coming out. I would say as an astrologer, I guess since I'm an, I'm an astrologer, so the eclipse. I just, I just feel like people got to take off all this weight they're carrying of like what it's supposed to look like in their life. Which is actually very basic manifestation, right? Like this is the... Aries is associated so much of what I'm doing and who I am and where I'm going. And this Chiron is just saying like, okay, it's okay the way it is. But also at the same time, like when you fully accept who you are, you're going to know what you don't want to accept anymore because that's not who you are. The only way you're going to find it right now is by not, it's not about going after something. It's about just being fully yourself and realizing this isn't me and this is me. And also allowing other people to know that they're going through that too. So to stop doing the South Node Libra like judgment or reflection or continuing to look at somebody else kind of gauge your own self by it's like just and not and not reacting because that's the hard part about life like the second we get frustrated or we get upset in life that takes us off the manifestation paths quick the mm -hmm. second we react to that you know that that's a whole day loss sometimes it's a week loss for some people like when we make big reactions about things the emotions go wrong the mind goes wrong it's hard to do what we wanted to do oh yeah and it really, that's, that's, I think, the hardest healing is how, how to stop reacting to it mm -hmm. or responding to being reacted to. Yeah, because that's when it starts digging deeper. A lot of people think that, oh, yeah. man, once, once I learn how to manifest, everything's going to be so much easier. And I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> it's, just, <laughs> yeah. it's way harder because now you have this, these two parts of you where you're aware of how it works. But then you have this other unconscious part of you. Right. And that's the when the conscious and the unconscious are going at it, your conscious mind yeah. is like, how do I fucking make that part of my mind stop doing that? And you, it's running on autopilot. And it becomes really frustrating. So then you start getting frustrated with yourself. And then when you start getting frustrated with yourself, that pulls you even further off the path. It, it's a pain in the ass, but it's... Uh, oh, here, I just read this random comment, but this might be a good way to end it. 
What if you're still confused about what we really are or want? What if you're still confused about it? Yeah, it's this person saying, like, what if they're still confused about what they really are or what they want? What would be your answer? Well, that sucks. <laughs> I mean, it, it, you would have to be a little bit more specific than that. I mean... Maybe that's the problem. I mean, I think it starts with simple stuff. Like, I always teach with, like, Aries. It's, like, very Cro-Magnon, like, I'm hungry. Like, what do I want to eat? If you have a problem with that, I mean, we, you know, it's like, okay, there's a lot of problems there. Yeah. Like, you, you to eat is to, to thrive. I mean, if you're confused yeah. about what you want, that's a deeper underlying issue. Because, see, when it all comes down to it, it's never the thing that we want. We always think it's a thing that we want. It's right. not the thing that we want. What we want is the feeling that we think the thing is going to create for us. So that's, that's where you have to dig down deep. It's like, what do I want? What do I want? You don't want anything. You want a feeling. You want a frequency. You right. want a vibration. Vibration is the primary law. The thing is something that you attract. Attraction is the secondary right. law. So it's not about obtaining a thing. It's about finding the vibration within yourself first. Yeah, and that reminds me too of like, so many things are attracted to us. Maybe in that case too, it's like do what Rich said, but also look at yourself like, what's shown up that you didn't receive? Like maybe you asked for that and then, yeah. oh, it came and then, oh, you didn't like the way it looked. Yep. Because sometimes it's actually maybe you do know what you want, but maybe too much to where it's like it needs to look exactly like this in every fucking way. You're expecting the universe to make something that's tweaked out in the middle of it being delivered. Or every now and then, be careful with that, because sometimes the universe will punish you by giving you what you want. Right. What you think you want. Right. <laughs> and you'll realize that's never what you wanted, ever. Like Diddy. You like know? Diddy. <laughs> I know. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Diddy went M to, to F, you know? <laughs> like, and I, I think that, you know, when people think what they want, it's like, it's, it's like, it's not a strategy. It's not a plan. It's not something that you contemplate. You, you feel it. You go towards it. But I think people have a problem with that. It's kind of like, I feel like getting a haircut today. Okay, go get a haircut. Don't, Say you want to get a haircut and then fucking, I don't know if I do anymore. You know, it's like. Well, okay, let me you see. You know, like, I, it's like, it's like, that's where I see a lot of it is like, I really want to go do it. Okay, then go do it. Right. But, but here, then, then on your own, find out is like, is that crossing something that gets rid of something else that I have to be doing? Or, you know, a lot of people, I think, get lost into the most stupidest shit because it's like the nouns are our life. What's the person, the place, or the thing? They want to play the verb. I want to be happy. Then that's not going to give you shit. I want to be happy. Yeah. Well. Like, okay, I'm going to send you with P. Diddy, and you're going to go have a pizza party with him. You'll be, a lot, <laughs> you'll be really happy, right? Oh, no, I won't. Well, what kind of happy do you want to be? Because it's still happy. Maybe it's not happy, but it's still happy. Yeah. I, I, I think that to, to try to, whoever that is that's confused about what they want, there's a really annoying phrase that's been thrown around the spiritual community since as far back as I can remember. And this used to drive me nuts when I was new on my path. Have you ever heard somebody say, all the answers are inside of you? You ever heard that? You hear that shit all the time. And I, that would piss me off. I'd be like, what are you fucking talking about? I don't have the answers to anything. That's why I'm looking for guidance. And dude, it, it honestly took me about three years to realize, dude, now I know what that fucking means whatever I choose to believe the answer is, is what the fucking answer is. We're so conditioned to believe that the answer is out here in somebody else's hands and it's not. So whatever it is that you think you want, pick a path and start walking. Well, here's what I think I want. I don't know how to fucking do it, but I'm going to start doing this. And then the minute I take action on the path from that point forward, anything that happens is part of the process of creating it. And I am the only one who gets to assign that a meaning. Right. So if I want to, let's say, fucking, I don't know, start a podcast. Right. Let's say I want to start a podcast. So I say, okay, well, I'm going to start fucking doing it. So I set up my phone and my mics and everything like that, and then something bad happens and it, and it crashes. Well, okay, well, what meaning am I going to assign that experience? Mm. That's part of the journey. One of these days, 
I'm going to be so fucking successful and I'm going to be telling the story about my first podcast that I tried to create and how it fucking flopped and it was a failure. Well, that's what that fucking means because I said so. Right. And if you can hold that, which nobody can because they don't fucking trust themselves, but if you can hold that, not for just a couple of days, not for a couple of weeks, for weeks and weeks and weeks and months and months and months and years and years, right. and you hold that, your dreams have no choice but to manifest into reality. Yeah. But it's all from self-trust. It's all yeah. inside. That's what that's what the answers are inside of you means. So hopefully that was a simple enough way of explaining it. No, I think I think to take it simple is like, okay, you want something, it just doesn't mean that you receive it and then it just instantly glorifies. It's about how you hold something. Yeah. It's about how you hold it. So if you want it, you'll get it. It's how much you're going to do the work and continue to hold it, which it's not work as much as it's like to actually have something you want means that you would willing to be willing to hold it for as long as possible. Mm -hmm. Right? If you really wanted it, you would hold it for eternity if you could. Like if you really don't want it, like did I really want Burger King the cup? No. <laughs> I just wanted the Sprite. But I already gave the expectation of like I'm not trying to keep the cup. I just wanted the Sprite and, I, and that's all it was. I'm not putting too much on the Sprite because that's where I see so many people in astrology like, I fucking, I, I have Jupiter right now. It's exactly conjunct my son. I want, I'm not seeing good luck. <laughs> I'm like, well, are you healthy? Yeah, okay. Like, you know, like there's all these questions I'll ask. Like, you know, it's like, wow. You're at the optimum place for everything to happen. Mm-hmm. But I want more of what? Like, you haven't utilized what Jupiter's trying to give you the expansion and the growth. Like, that's why I hate when people say good luck. Because it's just like, the only good luck there is in life really is if you're good and you're, I don't even like the word luck. Because yeah. it's like, there is no luck to yeah. me. You either just doing what you want to hold and, 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 that's the problem is people get it more than they want to admit and they just don't want to hold it because they really, they just want something new all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's really fleeting. Yeah, they want a, they want a feeling because that new thing, anytime you obtain anything new in your life. Like, it's a dopamine for, rush. Yeah, like, like a car. Have you, ever, have you ever like gone a long time without a car? And then, yeah. you know, for like months, you're like, I just need a car. I don't care what kind of car it is. Just anything with four wheels that runs, you know, and then finally, like six months later, you get a car and you're like, yes, I finally got a car and you're so happy. But then like six months later, a year later, you're bitching about it. Now, I don't like the rims. The steering wheel kind of moves a little bit funny. The mirrors look stupid. The front end looks stupid. I'm ready. I'm, I'm tired of it. Right? Yeah, the fucking cassette that you put in, fucking hooked up with the fucking three point five little fucking cord <laughs> to your fucking phone, fucking yeah. broke. Yeah, because it, it was it was like you that know? happy that happy feeling that that feeling that you that you when you first got your new car, that's the feeling everybody's right. chasing, and it's very fleeting. It's very fleeting, and it's it's no different. I don't care if you end up attracting your your fucking person, and you end up getting your dream job and you end up making the fucking money you've always wanted to make it's gonna feel really good for a little bit and then it's gonna get boring yeah the puppy smell is gonna leave yeah the new car smell is gonna leave yeah and then it's like gonna get boring that, that's life you mm -hmm. know yeah like so that that's like, that's the feeling everybody's always chasing is that dopamine rush of that new thing Right. And, and people have been, so, we've been so conditioned to believe that that's happiness. And people do the same thing in relationships, bounce from person to person to person. As soon as that new person feeling wears off, they right. bounce to another one. Same thing. People, we've been so conditioned to believe that pleasure is happiness. So I want to find a person that's going to create that happy feeling for me for the rest of my life. When it's like that, that that's not love. No. Love, you'll know whether or not real love is there whenever that feeling wears off. Right. But most people, by the time that feeling wears off, now they hate each other because they never even got the chance to get to know each other. Right. You know? So that's what I lose sleep trying to figure out how to explain efficiently. Yeah. I mean, because that, that, because it's, it's really about so much more than the basics of even the, I want to know how to know how to want. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, 
okay, well, like, <laughs> there's a lot there that's what you just said, what we just said. Like, it's it's so... Uh, you could just write anything. That's great, but it's like, if what's underneath that? What, what's, the, what's the purpose to that? Mm-hmm. And then where's the purpose that builds on top and continues to build on top to me? Because in manifestation, it's like great to manifest something. It's better when the manifestation is a manifestation of a manifestation mm-hmm. and it continues. Well, that, that's, a that's, fre- that's, that's a frequency. That, yeah, and that's yeah. about maintaining it and growing it. And, and it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's better when it's those big gradual like really strong fucking things mm-hmm. because they really grow into big things. I mean, if you want a fucking tree, I, sure, I can go pull one out of the ground and replant it. It's going to have a little trouble regrowing mm-hmm. until it fucking feels comfortable there and it might not like that environment, right? Yeah. But if I give you a seed right now mm-hmm. and say, you wanted a tree, here's a fucking apple tree seed, guess what? You're going to be like, fuck, I don't want to do all that work. Right, yeah. Right? A good analogy. If, if we were to give people actually what they wanted from the seed of what it was, mm-hmm. right? It's like, I want a baby. It's like, all right, here's their fucking new egg after your period <laughs> on a fucking wheelchair because it's Chiron. <laughs> Nobody got that. <laughs> like, I'm like, okay, the solar eclipse is happening. The menstrual cycles, the fucking uh, the moon cycle. And this is a solar eclipse with Chiron. So the egg, we all feel like the egg that's being, you know, the new egg that's coming out. But we're all just showing up in our wheelchairs, the egg. Like, at least we got it. Fuck. <laughs> Nobody got that. Everybody was like, what does this mean? <laughs> I was like... I thought people were into astrology. Like, they didn't get it. The we, fact that I have to, like, explain it. We were sitting in Subway. I when, know, I know. When, and then somebody wrote, like, he's just sitting there eating Adderall, fucking d- d- just doing all this shit, fucking, like, doing AI. Fucking, I'm like, we fucking were driving and fucking we were set. We were eating yeah. sub sandwiches, God damn it! I know we were eating sub sandwiches. And I just had the idea pop in my head. I'm like, oh, Chiron in the wheelchair. I told people they'd be seeing wheelchairs everywhere. And all you see, keep seeing is wheelchairs everywhere. I was like, <laughs> fucking that. Oh, my God. The egg fucking coming out fucking with a wheelchair. Nobody's drawn that before. But AI will draw that for me. <laughs> Here's your egg. Now go get it fucking figured out. You know, but oh no, I don't want to have to die. Yeah. You know, like everything in life that's amazing, especially we're birthed, right? We all come out of a woman, our mothers. So like, that's a big process. It's not an instant coffee and it's a lot. If you want to have a kid, well fucking, you got to do the duty first. <laughs> so you got to want to do that. You got to really want the person. You know, the worst is if you want a kid and then you don't want the person and you weren't attracted to it. Right? And then, mm-hmm. oh, I don't want the kid now. That's so why you see abortion so high and people oh. fighting over abortion. Oh, my God. It's like, if you really think about it, it's like, oh, you really want to go through the experience of taking a pill and killing the fucking child inside of you. Yeah. Didn't you see the one like, where the, that's the, a hard manifestation fucking, for people to actually admit there was a dude, somebody in there doesn't want the kid. The, dude, That's what a want is. It there could was, be that there was a fucking dude. I'm not playing who said, I want to be the first trans woman to have an abortion. So, so think about that. I want to go cut my dick off. And get a uterus implanted into me, impregnate it, just so I can go kill it. And that is real shit. That's going to be a really dirty ass toilet. <laughs> <laughs> like, fucking horror movie, fucking 2024. Oh, man. Like, like Dylan Mulvaney has been taken, like, like he, she, nothing now. <laughs> Whoever the first one to do that will take the <laughs> crown you know what i mean like it would be the new fucking head of red bull or something it would be on every red bull like got wings <laughs> <laughs> oh man always with wings <laughs> <laughs> but that's like a weird thing though because that's a want yeah like people don't people when they think of want they think of the pleasure thing right most people are doing what they want all the time. Like, I, oh, shit, I want to go through this hell. Or somebody doesn't want something. More people are actually always focused on what they don't want. Mm-hmm. 
I don't want this baby. Fuck, I'm gonna fucking do it. I don't want this relationship. I don't want this. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I thought you wanted that. So the yeah. problem probably sometimes might be as simple as the things that you want. Maybe, maybe like again, it's maybe, not maybe, maybe look at it as like just don't go out there and just be like, I just get whatever I want because that means that you have a lot of okay. Now I'm trying to get rid of the things I don't want anymore. Yeah, it's maybe good. take a pen and paper and be like, how many things don't I want in my life right now? And how many things do I want? And are all those, if those wants are based off what you don't want, it's not going to be a real want. It's going to be back to, now that's going to be back on the other side of the paper again. Because it's, it's not a thing. And that's an ultimate fucking trap loop of fucking just straight up, just like the don't want is basing what now I want. And then that want turns back to the don't want. Mm -hmm. It's because it goes back to what I said a minute ago. Because it's not a thing you want; it's a feeling. So I got the thing. It created a feeling that was very temporary. The feeling went away. Now it's not creating that feeling for me anymore. So I don't want the thing anymore. It's very simple. It, yeah, and then I think that comes down to identification or identity issues, right? If you don't know who you are, like basically, like, like, because that comes down to like, it's not like you want to be somebody. You just are somebody. Yeah want to be perceived as somebody right. you know how many people have actually and i shit you not dude i have had at least a dozen people in the last six months come to me and ask me how do others see me and i have to tell them i'm like what how do others see you how many people do you know let's say you know 400 people well there is 400 different versions of you out there mm. There's a different version of you in the mind of everybody that knows you. People have this idea that everybody sees me the same way. No, the fuck they don't. You know? So, right, so, right. so that's what your average person out here who's, who's worried about being perceived by somebody or, or, or they're, they're worried about their identity, their image. They have this one image they're trying to portray to the world. And, and, and it's and impossible. It's impossible. <laughs> so, yeah, it's social media. Or yeah. like when you see people attack people right online, it's yeah. like their identification of you or that person that they're attacking mm -hmm. is one thing. And they act as if it's the totality of who you are. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like that is like a grain of sand on a beach of yeah. who we all are. So it's like. And that's, I think, the problem with just even, like, how we kind of created life. Like, this is this country's name. This is this beach's name. The beach has so many different parts to it. The, the terrain is... Uh, these are these mountains. It's like, well, what part of the mountains? You know, because, like, mm -hmm. uh, Donner Pass didn't end up too well. So that's why they name it Donner Pass. That doesn't <laughs> mean every time you go there, you're going to fucking start eating your family. But, like, you know... Like certain names stick, and I think people want their names to stick, even if it's bad. Yeah, and like they don't realize that that's like an attachment that they have because it's like, well, I don't have the identity to attach to, so I'll attach to even if it's bad because yeah. like that's it's always easier to attach to a bad identity than it is a good one because that takes nurturing and holding the energy and doing the work with it. Yeah, and well, and that that goes off into the thing now where the, where everybody is is so obsessed with trying to be famous. Yeah. For no fucking reason. You know, well, you It's like like oh like oh yeah, I'm a slut. Fuck yeah. Like that's my identity. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like <laughs> oh yeah, I'm a piece of shit. Yeah. Like, you know, like if it if it gets me attention, anything that'll get me a bunch of views. My video got so many views and I'm like oh, what what's the point of the views? There is no point. It's just everybody knows who I am now. Like that doesn't bother you. That that you you can sleep at night knowing that a hundred thousand people heard you say something fucking stupid, and you can go to sleep at night like that. Yes, because I got a bunch of views and 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 and. Well, and, I, and the idea of a view too is like it's not like they're going to bed fucking in their bed going God and replaying the video all night long yeah. in their head like, <laughs> geez, that video, the video. Them, them, yeah. them. Oh my god. I got up in the morning as I'm taking a shit. I can't with that video. <laughs> oh my god, that view. Yeah. That view I had. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like that, that I think that's the sad part about it is like songs viewed we all just go Yeah. It's like whatever you thought was a hilarious, you know, TikTok or real uh 
just two days ago was already. Yeah. And, and that's sad that people are holding on to as if. But again, the way people would know you is if they saw not just how many views, like unless you're the girl queefing in a fucking <laughs> Spider-Man thing that you showed me that. And she even said, like, I, I'm trying to get your all attention, uh, but all these chicks do thirst traps. I thought I would queef in a Spider-Man outfit. Yeah. And that's how she got her views. I was like, fucking wow, sad. we're at that place right now. Yeah. Like th that people will do that. Yeah. Like, but you got to hand it to her. I mean, I was like, okay. She even said like, I, I can't, I'm not going to thirst trap you. I'll queef in my fucking, <laughs> like walking around going. Bruh, bruh, bruh. I was like, what the fuck is this? But do you think she can sleep at night now, now that a million people saw her queef? No, I don't know. I think she queefs to her head into the headboard. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> So she wakes up every night, but oh man, she got to call uh, the fucking my pillow guy. There's no more pillows left, though. But, <laughs> you know, because like that's the other thing is I think if you're attached to an identity for too much, like the my pillow guy, for example, right? Like he's not like his businesses are lost, right? And he's tried everything, and it's like maybe you're done with selling really shitty pillows for old people on social security. Time to cash in. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I'm willing to be like, maybe people don't want to watch astrology anymore for me one day and I'll do something else. I'll still do astrology, but I'll do, I'll do something else. I think that's the hard part though, is like, you know, if, does he really want to do pillows? No. Yeah. They were horrible. I never bought one, but <laughs> every older person I know fucking fell for it on Fox News. And I was just like, you paid this for that? How much were they? Fucking, they always like, were like, well, if you get fucking two pillows for the price of one, then we'll give you our free Egyptian cotton sheets. <laughs> then you got to buy this. And I don't know. It ends up to like 100 to 200 bucks, and you get two shitty pillows and a fucking... Bed sheets made by the my pillow guy that look like they're fucking from a Kansas kitchen. So, you know, I kind of like that guy though, Mike Lindell. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, he's got a good story. He smoked crack and became a Christian, right? <laughs> I didn't know much about him. I saw a couple of interviews with him, and he seemed like a cool hey, cat. If you can but... smoke crack, become a Christian, and make pillows. At least he figured out. I don't think he was asking people what he wanted. Well, I used to smoke it. crack, and now I read tarot. Right. So, yeah. like. right. So I don't know if it's pillows for you next, but <laughs> um, <laughs> based off being Aquarius with Pluto, there we'll all find out what you really like. <laughs> be really interesting. You know. All right, everyone. Well, awakening experience. You know where to find us. Much love, everyone. Thanks.